Hey, everybody, we're going to talk about AT&T and Verizon if these high dividend stocks are right for you. Before we do, please take a minute to check out the link you see on your screen for a message from my sponsor, The Motley Fool. It's the best way to support this work we're doing here, and it, you can get the top 10 stocks to buy right now. So Tyler and I are here to talk about, well, one of my worst investments of all time. I held on to my AT&T shares for about 14 years before I gave up on it. Um, we don't get them all right. Look, hey, look, you know, I, I got tricked into Ver buying Verizon thinking that was a good idea, too. That, you know, you get tempted by dividend yields and you're like, this this has got to work, right? And well, you know, I think lessons learned. Yeah, and like for the, for the past five years, I would, you know, have a moment every year where I would say, should I sell this? But it looks so cheap right now. Maybe now's the, the good entry point where it's going to go up. Um, and I was fortunate enough, fortunate enough that I never really added to my to my position, but it was a pretty big investment for me. Um, and to be fair, it's it's gone down quite a bit recently. It's it, it's taken a hit uh, because it's a very interest rate sensitive stock, uh, both of them, AT and T and Verizon. So, first, um, Tyler, we're both going to be kind of pessimists today, but I'm going to start us off with some of the reasons to buy. Um, both of these have pretty high dividend yields. AT&T's is 7.7% at the current price. I know Verizon's is up there as well. Uh, AT&T trades for six times forward earnings. It has enough free cash flow to keep paying that dividend, so it's not like the dividend is in imminent danger. And its income is predictable. It's, it's essentially a utility. So if you're looking for a business that's going to be consistently earning money these would make a lot of sense, but there's a lot not to like about these stocks as well. Um, Tyler, Verizon's kind of the shorter of the two to explain what's wrong with it. So um, what, why shouldn't we buy Verizon? Well, I'm going to actually get a, my negative view actually kind of covers both of these companies uh, in general. And what it comes down to really is that these are companies that are, it's an extremely capital intense business for a relatively low to no growth, highly competitive business, you know, keep, keeping people signed up on their wireless contracts or on their, you know, in, in home fiber or whatever other contract that you have with your telecommunications company. It's a competitive business. You know, there's a reason that there are advertisements for these things all the time when you're watching television is because it's, they're they're trying to keep retention up this so it's expensive to keep people around uh it's expensive to build out these networks you know the deployment of 5g has been one uh, an extremely expensive endeavor because you have to deploy all this equipment uh, nationwide and for other you know utility or other telecoms not these two but sometimes can be worldwide not just for like the ability to you know to cover everything, but then you have to start dealing with capacity and with 5G being that much more data moving everywhere that you have to put that much more capacity into what is happening. So you, you can't, those are like, if you combine those three things together of, you know, highly competitive pricing, low revenue growth, high capital intensity, that really is not a recipe for market beating return or, a, a, you know, a wonderful business for, to own over the long term, And, you know, kind of it, it's really kind of borne out when you look at these stocks really I, I'm, I'm looking at the total returns since 1989 and so we're talking more than 30 years close to 35 years of you know total returns if you for 35 years Verizon be 690 percent that's nice sure AT&T 1100 percent but for the S&P 500 total return it's 2,500% on total return basis. And so, yeah, sure, you've, your, your total return has been growing with these utilities, but you've been vastly underperforming the market. And if you're willing to take the extra risk involved to buy individual stocks versus like an ETF, you know, you want those stocks to outperform the market. Uh, on a total return basis. And that just hasn't been the case with these businesses. And for me, you know, like we said, we got tempted to do these things a long time ago because of the very things we just said, cheap, high yield, things got to turn around, right? But 
I feel like we've been telling that story for 10, 15, 20 years. It can't just be cheap and high yield forever, right? Well, maybe they can. Yeah, I mean, you just mentioned that they're spending a lot of money building out their 5G network. So a lot of people might be watching this thinking, you know, well, at some point their network's going to be built out and then their CapEx goes away. But no, these are always going to be very expensive, capital intensive businesses. You know, after 5G, there will be a 6G technology at some point. You know, there, there's always going to be something that needs to be built out. Um, and in AT&T's case, especially, um, management just has not been on the ball. They've been kind of, let's say, made some missteps when it comes to acquisitions. That's kind of putting it mildly. Um, they acquired DirecTV um, you know, right when everything started to decline in in, in that type of, of media. That would be like buying a print newspaper right now and hoping it's going to turn around. Um, or like when it, Verizon bought AOL. Right, when Verizon bought AOL, or uh, more recently when AT and T bought bought Warner Media, um, you know, just it, they, they made and those acquisition mistakes led to a lot of debt. Uh, AT and T they, they've done a good job of paying down some of it, but they have one hundred twenty eight billion dollars of debt for a hundred billion dollar market cap company. So you know their debt's higher than their market cap, um, and it's a high interest rate environment. Which I don't know Verizon's debt situation as well, but I same, know it's, it's up thing. there. Same thing. One hundred eighty-two um, billion dollars in debt to one hundred and forty million dollar market cap. So right, and in AT and T's case, and I'm sure Verizon's similar. About fifteen billion dollars of it is maturing within the next year. That's going to need to be refinanced. It's a rising rate environment. AT and T's current interest expense alone is six point five billion dollars a year. Chances are that's going to get higher before it gets lower. Um, so, I mean, in conclusion, I don't know where you would stand on this. I wouldn't quite call these dividend traps because I think that's a strong term that references a specific type of stock where the business is really in trouble. But it's not that far from it. Over the, You mentioned the long-term returns, which, you know, pretty solid, underperforming the S&P, but I could live with that. But over the past 10 years, this is when I owned AT&T. Uh, over the past 10 years, AT&T's total return, including those high dividends, has been 20% over the 10-year period, not per year, in 10 years. Uh, that's versus 220% total returns for the S&P. So these have just been terrible investments. Verizon's slightly better than that. But would you call these dividend traps or just stocks to avoid? Uh, I w- the only – the best – case scenario I could make for a company for these companies is basically a, you know, recessionary environment stock, because people are probably going to pay their wireless bills, they're probably going to pay their cable bills, you know, there's a lot of other discretionary spending that's going to go away, before you start cutting things like, you know, your your wireless bill. And so perhaps in a recession, or in a a bear market, where things are, are starting to really look south, these companies could look more attractive. So maybe if you're like betting on a very stagnant to weak economy for a long time, but that's the best case I can make. Other than that, it's yeah, I, 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 I might as well just, like I said, own index funds of, of a broader market or go somewhere else where I can get dividends that actually have some growth behind them. Yeah, my, my biggest bull case I can make right now is like I said, these are interest rate sensitive stocks. So if rates start to fall over the next couple of years, they could get a nice tailwind from that in in the short term. But some of our real estate stocks that we follow are interest rate sensitive as well and are just better. (laughs) Um, So every time I I think of AT&T, I I end up finding better ways to talk myself out of it. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment, so I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beaten the market by nearly four times. Go to fool.com slash frankel to get your 10 stock picks now. The Motley Fool Stock Advisor returns are 504% as of September 8th, 2023, and are measured against the S&P 500 returns of 130% as of September 8th, 2023.